Um, so today I'll review and present the famous ResNet paper, which came out around 2016 by renowned authors Kai ming uh, Shang Yu Zhang, Xiao King Ren, and Jian Sun. And at the point of the paper submission, I believe that uh, all the authors were at the Microsoft Research. Uh, and, uh, yes. And before we begin, I would like to mention that there are actually two papers dealing with uh, ResNet, which is written by the same exact authors. Um, the first is the normal ResNet paper, paper called uh, Deep Residual Learning for Image Recognition. And the second is their follow-up paper, which contains analysis on uh, residual build, building blocks and multiple ablation experiments for various uh, variations on ResNet building blocks. So originally, I actually planned my presentation to discuss both of these papers. Uh, however, I realized that uh, the presentation time is too short for discussing the details of the paper. So in this presentation, I will mainly focus on the first uh, paper. Um, yeah. So why am I reviewing our ResNet paper? So one can ask me, uh, isn't identity connection everything about uh, the ResNet paper? And my answer is that although I believe that identity, con identity connection is the main, contribu main contribution of the paper, I think there are many details uh, that are worth understanding. And personally, there are some details that I didn't know about before uh, I read this paper. So, um, also, it is also helpful to understand the architectures that does not work well and how the authors concluded with the simplest uh, ResNet design. So um, I'll discuss about the first paper. Before we talk about the residual network, we need to know what is a degradation problem. So this graph shows the training error on Cypher 10 with 20 layer and 57 plane uh, network, which means that, that these network does, does not have the identity con uh, connection. Uh, as you can see from this graph, uh, even though 56 layer has more uh, expressive power and capacity, it does not overfit but underfit to the data. So, um, so as you can see, the training error on 56 layer is much higher than 20, 20 layers. So we cannot say that uh, the model overfitted to the data. So this also happens in ImageNet data as well. Uh, even though 34 layer model has more expressive power, it has both higher, high, higher validation and the training error. Since it has higher, higher training error, uh, we cannot say that the, the, the degradation is caused by the overfitting. However, um, without thinking about optimization, but purely from the model's capacity perspective, this phenomenon is uh, counterintuitive, counterintuitive because the deeper network should have less training error than the shallower network. This is because we can argue that the deeper network can mimic the shallower network by learning the identity connections. For example, um, in this diagram, if we make these layers to, so here, um, if, these, if we make these layers to learn the identity, then the deeper network can precisely mimic the shallower network. Um, however, as shown by the pre previous experiments, uh, our usual optimization techniques have difficulties in appro approximating uh, these identity mappings. So uh, for the models to learn the identity mappings uh, is uh, quite hard. So in order to make networks learn, um, uh, in order to make networks to learn identity mappings more explicitly, the authors formulate a residual function. Uh, let's say more, one or more few layers should learn the desired function uh, h of x. Then the assuming input and output has, uh, assuming that input and output have the same dimensions, 
the residual function f of x is defined as the uh, output of h of x minus x. Then um, now h of x is e now equal to f, x, f of x plus x. But now, as you can see, the expressiveness of the left formulation and the right formulation is identical. However, from optimization perspective, the ease of learning the, the left side h of x or the ease of learning of f of x on the right side is completely different. Uh, using the residual formulation, the authors suggest the following residual block. Although the left side is a general formulation, I want to emphasize the specific formulation which is on the right side. Uh, this is because I believe that there are a lot of details that people often uh, miss that I personally find uh, interesting. So first, uh, I want to discuss about the elementwise addition. A few slides ago, we assumed that uh, we can use the elementwise additions to connect the shortcut. This means that the dimensions of f, f of x and x has to be the same. However, sometimes they, they don't really match. For example, the number of channels might have, incre might have increased. In this case, the authors uh, add the linear projections to the shortcut connections in order to match the dimensions. So on the right side, it has a uh, WS, uh, which is uh, a projection layer that is applied to the input and then that is added to the shortcut. Uh, now we can uh, use the same mechanisms to uh, layers that have a matching dimension. However, the paper mentions that identi identity mapping is sufficient for addressing the degradation problem and this is more economical than using the linear projection layer. So I'll try to discuss more in the uh, experiment section. Uh, and second, I want to discuss the specific location of the nonlinearity. As you can see from this diagram, the ReLU activation is applied after the addition. However, we can also think about applying ReLU before addition or even at the beginning of the block. There, are, there can be several variations of this activation location, which is uh, thoroughly analyzed in depth in the second ResNet paper. And third, uh, although the formulation of the residual function f is very flexible, the ResNet paper uses uh, two or three layers to model one residual function block. And the paper explicitly states that it is not much helpful to on, use only one layer as the residual function. Uh, and when constructing much deeper networks, using previous two-layer block is quite inefficient. Therefore, the authors used the bottleneck design for the deeper networks, specifically for the ResNet uh, 50 and ResNet 101 and 152. Using the left side two layer block is even more expensive when the identity connection is replaced with the projection. This is because the projection is connected to the two high dimensional input and output. So for example, um, here, uh, when we connect this with the, um, the projection layer, when we uh, multiply by WS, suggested by the previous slide, then the, uh, the computation, um, the number of computation is uh, proportional to the input size and the output size, which would be 64 in this case. So uh, as the input and output has a higher dimension, the computational uh, expense, uh, computational cost uh, increases uh, rapidly. So, um, this bottleneck structure is later used as a motivation to, uh, to also develop uh, inverted residual block uh, bottleneck used in uh, mobile net version 2. And another one common misconception about ResNet is that it solves gradient uh, vanishing problem. However, the author argues that the degradation problem is unlikely to be caused by vanishing gradients, which means that the degradation problem is uh, not the same as the vanish, uh, gradient vanishing problem. This is because the authors employed the batch normalization 
which is known to solve the gradient vanishing problem. And they explicitly verified that the gradients exhibit a healthy norm. So the authors conjecture that the, the plane networks uh, may have expo exponentially low uh, convergence rates. And now I'm going to discuss uh, some of the experiments. First, uh, I want to focus on the identity versus projection shortcuts. In the paper, uh, the authors compared four different options where um, here the plane network uses uh, no shortcut at all for every, every layers. And for option one, uh, option A, um, they used zero padding for the uh, increasing dimensions while they use, keep using uh, identity connection for the uh, same dimension. And for option B, uh, they used projection shortcuts. They, they changed the zero padding to the projection shortcuts, and then they keep the identity connections for the same dimension. And lastly, on option C, uh, they use projection shortcuts for everything. And uh, this is uh, here. And as you can see the results on the right side, the plane network has the uh, highest error rate um, here. No, wait. No. Here. Uh, the plane network ha has the highest error rate, while zero padding and using using the identity has a much lower error rate here. And while using projection shortcuts on increasing dimensions only, uh, in increasing dimensions only, has an uh, even lower rate here. Um, and lastly, pr using projections for all of the shortcuts is uh, marginally better. So from this projection experiment, since they achieved the best results uh, with option C by adding projections for every shortcut, they could have easily concluded, uh, concluded to use this option for rest of the experiments. However, uh, the authors suggest that the projection shortcuts are not essential for addressing the degradation problem, while um, using identity connections are sufficient to solve the uh, degradation problem. So they think that the marginally better uh, accuracies is due to these, these projection shortcuts also have a uh, weight, which means that they have more expressive capacity than uh, option B. However, they add uh, more more computation, so they choose to use the option B for the rest of their um, uh, experiments. And this is the partial uh, screenshot of the plane network and uh, ResNet. As you can see, all of the configuration is the same, except for the identity connection and the dotted line represent the projection shortcuts. Um, here, and while 34 layer plane networks achieve higher error rate than the uh, than 18 layer plane network, the ResNet 34 layer plane net, uh, ResNet 34 layer network achieves lower error rate than the 18 layer uh, network. Uh, as you can see, increasing the number of layers does not hurt the validation accuracy when using ResNet and uh, it solves the uh, degradation problem. And uh, this is the experiment while uh, increasing, um, increasing the depth. So here, uh, when we increase the um, depth from 34 to 50, 101, and 152, the error rate uh, decreases. And also here, the accurate, uh, the error rate decreases as, as we uh, increase the depth from 34 to 152. Now, uh, this is the experiment result on ensembles. As you can see from uh, left side, the single model, the ResNet 152 achieves even better results than previous ensemble results on the right side from other models. And their ensemble achieved even lower uh, error rate of top five error of uh, 3.57, 57. And 
they did more experiments on Cypher 10. And here, as you can see, they, they increased the layers up, up to until um, 1,202. Uh, however, they achieved the best uh, accuracy in, in um, when, when the layers was uh, 110. This is because uh, that they, they say that they, the authors concluded that um, the 1,202 layer model is overfitted because uh, as you can see from here, uh, the train accuracy is very, very low. Um, so they, um, the train accuracy is very low, and val the, but the validation accuracy is not, which means that uh, they, the model is uh, overfitted. So they think that Cypher 10 data set is too small for the models to, for 1,202 model to learn. So, um, so when the data is like, uh, when big enough, like ImageNet, they can, they, they say that more, like adding more layers uh, can help the uh, accuracy. And they did more analysis on the layer responses. So what layer responses is that um, it is the output of the uh, three by three layer after batch normalization and just before the nonlinearity. So here they show uh, on the left side they show uh, the standard deviation of these layer responses, and uh, they say that. Um, as compared to the plane network, the ResNet, ResNet has a lower standard deviation, which means that uh, their, their motivation on the residual uh, function is correct because that the residual function uh, has generally lower, like closer to zero uh, than the non-residual non functions. And finally, um, for takeaways and personal thoughts, um, I believe that ResNet paper is a seminal paper uh, with well-supported experiments, which is very concisely written with uh, every details. And also, I think identity connection is not everything. Uh, there are more details on ResNet paper that is worth knowing. For example, about using projections on, only on increasing dimensions and they, since they did a bunch of experiments to show that uh, using projections only on increasing dimensions is enough. So it is worth knowing that part. And also uh, they used bottleneck structures to reduce computation on more deeper networks. Uh, and that's also useful to know because um, just naively constructing more layers with uh, connecting every input and output dimension it's very comp computationally uh, expensive. Um, and thank you for listening.